All right. Coach, if you want to start us off, then we'll take questions. Well, I'd like to start just by saying, um, you know, as a program and um, and the ACC, but just a program in general, I want to send out our thoughts and prayers um, to the UVA community, uh, to our colleagues and to their students, student athletes, their families. It's terrible news and uh, a tragedy. You know, football and coaching is a brotherhood and we, we definitely um, are here alongside them and, and support them and, and suffer with them and doesn't feel like we should be talking about football uh, with what's going on up there. It's, it's tough. So really, really challenging situation for, for their school and, and hateful, hateful people. It's just a lot of the evil out there. And, and um, I hope everybody can pray for them and, and help them through this. So with that, uh, I guess I'll talk about our game. We just had a, a tough loss, to say the least. Really hard one to swallow. You know, um, in general, it's kind of two separate halves when you look at how it went down. But we started fast, you know, scoring 14 points in the first quarter, which was what we wanted to do to try to get out on a team that had a young quarterback. After those two drives, uh, we had a hard time scoring. You know, there's a, a variety of reasons for that. Um, usually drives end because of lack of execution, um, penalties, creating tough down and distances uh, to call plays, or because some players on their side of the ball made some good plays. And, and I think we had all of those things happen. You know, the best thing Boston College was defensively was a third down defense. They were very good. And, and we presented that to them a lot. And uh, that's hard with a freshman quarterback to be in third and extra long. I thought our defense did a good job of keeping us in the game and battling, um, held them to minus four yards rushing. We turned the ball over three times in the second half um, before the final play. And on all three of those turnovers, we responded by not allowing points on defense. And that's tremendous response by those guys. I thought they pressured the quarterback. And in a game like that, you know, uh, it came down to the final drive. And fourth and seven, um, they get in the red zone. And, and uh, the play that they ran, we practiced all week. Uh, Drake Thomas made the play in practice all week. He knew the play that was coming. And I thought he made a terrific play. Uh, timing, broke on the football, had both hands extended. I thought he beat the receiver to the spot. And he did everything that we could ask him to do. Uh, I'm really proud of him uh, for making that play. And, you know, at the end of that play, we should have been out there on offense, kneeling the ball down for a win. But that's not how it ended. And so it is what it is, which makes it hard to swallow, you know. And like I told my team after the game, I, I hurt for our senior class. <laughs> that uh, they didn't get the, the satisfaction of that. Um, when you're playing with a freshman quarterback and you're missing several players with injuries and it comes down to one play in a game and you have a great player like Drake and he makes the play, man, that's how you should win. And you can call it an ugly win. I'll take it all day long, man. <laughs> but we didn't get it. So it's back to the drawing board and, and um, get ready for another one. And I love our players. I love – how they compete. Can we do things better? Can we coach better? Can we play better? Can we make fewer mistakes? Of course we can. And, and that'll be our emphasis as we move forward. You know, I thought our special teams were terrific. Um, Caden Newcaster continues to impress us as a punter. Keon was saying, and Daryl Jones as gunners uh, on those units, Keon forced a fumble and created a huge play. Our defense also had two takeaways, two great interceptions. Chris Dunn set a record in the ACC with um, being perfect again in a game, you know, and, and give Boston College credit. Zay Flowers is a special football player. I mean, he's he's electric and, you know, obviously we knew where he was and he still made plays. Um, and they battled back. And so you have to give them credit for that. Now on to our next game with Louisville. They've won four of their last five. Uh, we get to come down there and play on senior day against them and it's really two uh, very similar defenses, very aggressive defenses head-to-head. -head. Um, they forced a lot of turnovers. As you know, they forced eight against Wake. 
they bring a lot of pressure. They're coached well, they're aggressive, and they have good players. You know, on offense, Scott's always been a balanced offensive coach, has good run game, a lot of outside zone, play actions, nakeds. Uh, we'll have a couple trick plays, has very good personnel in the backfield. His tailbacks are hard runners, his receivers, uh, has a variety of guys at the receiver position, big, small, fast. Their tight ends are good players and experienced players, and their line's athletic. So look forward to another, you know, talented team and, and the chance to compete and a uh, road game at that. And uh, look forward to that opportunity with our players and two games here in 11 or 12 days, whatever that is. So got a lot on our plate and um, in light of what's going on regionally in our conference, it's, it's, it's hard to focus on it, to be honest, you know, so there's a lot going on right now, but um, that's the world we're in. Questions? David? Dave, you, you mentioned that it is tough to focus on football today. How do you address this topic and this tragedy with your team? And is this something you bring up today and, and explore with each other? Well, I, I won't have them today. Today is our day off. You know, I will have them in the morning and we will discuss it. And uh, like everything that happens, I think being transparent, talking from my heart, letting them talk from theirs and be in it together. Chip? Yeah, Dave, I think we all feel the same way you do about the Virginia situation. It was quite a tragedy. Let, let me ask you one thing about a coaching situation. I, a lot goes into a coaching job, but it seems like picking a team up after a really tough loss might be one of the toughest things you have to do. How, how did you go about handling that and getting them focused on the next task? Well, similar. Uh, I just spoke from the heart. I, I, I told them I was in a lot of pain, too. You know, I, I felt for them. I um, felt like we were robbed in the moment um, because we made the play and I, what I thought was a great play and still do. And um, human errors are going to occur. None of us are perfect. And, you know, told them that they had to accept it and flush it and move on. And the only way we could, you know, become whole again as a team is to fill the cup back up with emotion and go compete again and win. And we still have opportunities in front of us that allow us to have, albeit not the season we thought at the beginning with, with what we've dealt with, we could have a great season here still, you know, and the guys all understand that. And so I think just being honest with them, not trying to sugarcoat anything and letting them talk as well, letting them, you know, say how they feel and did that with the leadership council. Um, and then I know in their position rooms, those guys always talk about things that way. Todd? Yeah, Dave, is this maybe a good time to go on the road? Uh, gives the guys a chance to kind of circle the wagons and us against them and a world mentality. Uh, is, it, is it a good time to, to maybe hit the road? Yeah, it might be. You know, I think it's a good time just to get back to playing, you know, whether we're home or away. But, yeah, it might be. I think these guys just like playing together. And, and that's, you know, one of the messages. Like, let's enjoy these next three games, these next two and 12 days. Let's enjoy the ride. Like, you know, it's things happen. It's bigger than wins and losses. When you talk about the brotherhood you have with each other and, you know, the time you get to spend with each other, the stories you have with each other. And, and so, you know, I don't want to lose sight of that um, because of how something ended and you have to remind them of that. David. Dave, you mentioned on Saturday that you felt like you guys didn't coach well enough to win. Have you had a little more time to diagnose the the specifics of, of that statement? Well, I think I'm always going to take the blame. I mean, I'm ultimately the head of everything that happens here. Um, and so anytime you watch the game uh, in your, you know, in your room and I stay up all night, you know, after a loss, you're like, what could I have done? You know, what things, of course there's calls, but you, you don't get that. You don't get it in life either. You know, you, you just don't but you can learn from it. And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, Hey, could we have blitzed or not blitzed? Could we have, should we have ran this play instead of that play? Of course, there's always those, but you know, we don't get the luxury of hitting rewind and having a do over, you know, At the end of the day, everything we did led us to one play to win it. And we made the play, right? We did. You guys all saw it. So yeah. Could we have eliminated that from happening with, on fourth and one on the one yard line, could we have gotten in the end zone? I thought we called a good play and we didn't block it well. 
And it's a play that should have scored because we had enough blockers at the point of attack. Could we have called another play? Sure, we could have. And we still would have had to have blocked it well. And maybe we would have, maybe we wouldn't have. On that particular play, their nose guard won on that play, you know, and that's football. Sometimes you go up and you make a play and sometimes you don't. And say the same thing about last year, you know. I mean, there were some times where Omeka just made some plays that most people probably wouldn't have made that won games for us, you know. If he dropped it, would it have been a bad call? No. You know, he made the play. And at the end of it, you have to coach the guys to do the best they can. And as coaches, you do the best you can. And second guessing yourself doesn't make the play different. You just learn from it. What else could I have done? And we do that every week, you know, every play, whether you guys believe that or not. Like we really, really sit in here and think about everything that we do. And we're not perfect, but these kids play really hard for us and we're doing everything we can to help them. James? Uh, Dave, I know you, you've talked a lot about first couple of games with MJ, him taking care of the football. When, you, when yeah. you're looking back at the mistakes or the turnovers from this, this past game, were they self-inflicted by him? Was it from the defense? What would you see on those three? Yeah, I think, you know, <laughs> maybe uh, when you get a true freshman in the game that hadn't played as much, maybe those could have happened earlier. You know, maybe the fact that he didn't have a, a mistake like that until this game made the expectations too high. I don't know. Right. I think he tried to make a play on one of them. You know, we're running a read play and he saw the end. Uh, he thought he'd outrun him, even though, you know, in retrospect, I'm sure he'd say he should have handed it. But he's a player trying to make a play. The running back had the ball, you know, uh, in his belly and it just didn't get pulled out the right way and went right to him. Right. On another one, he underthrew a ball. Of course, you know, he could throw a better pass there. That's going to happen uh, from time to time. So he made some mistakes that, like I told him, like, you're human too. You're going to learn from the things that you did and you're going to get better because of it. Like, you know, we don't expect him to be perfect. And, but you know, anytime any player, freshman up to senior makes a mistake, you know, you're going to evaluate it. You're going to try to help them through it. And all you ask is that they learn from it. And, and just to follow up, I know it's early in the week. Uh, you had a couple guys go out in this game, um, Trent, Grant, any, any updates on any of them? No, it's too early to say on that. Thanks. Brian? Yeah, Coach, um, I wondered if you'd heard from the ACC about your comments on that call or if you guys had conversely sent sent some tape to the league office about it. Yeah, I can't comment on any responses I get. Um, we always send in the calls that we're not happy with every week, and then, and then they respond, you know, whether they thought it was a good call or a bad call. And, and then as a coach, I'm not allowed to make that public. so. You guys know the rules on that. I also wondered late in the game, uh, obviously the offense was struggling. Did, did you think at all about going to Jack to maybe get his running ability in there, some some more QB run? No. Thanks. Uh, Chip. Yeah, Dave, well, one thing, look at, looking ahead to, to next week, just for a second, Mac Brown said today that, that both you and he lobbied the ACC not to play that game on a Friday so as not to interfere with the high school playoffs. Uh, did you do that, and could you just explain a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, in general, the High School Coaches Association in the state of North Carolina uh, has made it um, – very apparent that they don't like any of our colleges playing on Friday nights, that that's, you know, a high school football night. And we agree with that, but that's above our decision-making. Obviously that's part of the television contract that we're in and it'd be great if it wasn't a Friday game for those reasons. But one of those things that I don't control, Mac doesn't control and obviously neither of us like it, but it doesn't matter. Is there anything else for coach? All right, everybody. Thank you all. Thank you.